And now it's time to talk about agape. Paolo Coelho wrote about agape. Agape is total love. The love that devours those who taste it. Those who experience and taste agape see that nothing else in the world has importance. Just loving. This was the greater love that Jesus felt for humanity and it was so big that it shook the stars and changed the course of the history of the man. To me and to you who experienced agape, this life here might seem hard, terrible. However, the love that devours makes everything lose importance. These men live only to be devoured by their love. It is a feeling that invades everything, that fills all gaps and makes any attempt of aggression become dust. There are two types of agape. One of them is isolation, leading a life devoted to contemplation alone. The other one is exactly opposite. The contact to other human beings in addiction to enthusiasm in the sacred sense of work. Enthusiasm means trance, rapture, connection to God. Enthusiasm is agape directed to some idea, something. May you never for the rest of your life lose enthusiasm. It is a greater force turned into the final victory. And this is what C.S. Lewis wrote about agape that he calls charity. It's the unconditional love. Affection, friendship and romantic love are each the training ground for charity to grow. And it is also a rival to the three. I mean, storge, philos and eros are each the training ground for agape to grow. And agape is also a rival to the three. There is no safe investment to love at all is to be vulnerable. Love anything and your heart will certainly be wrung and possibly be broken. If you want to make sure of keeping it intact, you must give your heart to no one, not even to an animal. So wrap it carefully. Avoid all entanglements. Lock it up safe in the casket or coffin of your selfishness. But in that casket, safe, dark, motionless, airless, it will change. It will not be broken. It will become unbreakable, impenetrable, irredeemable. The alternative to tragedy, or at least to the risk of tragedy, is damnation. The only place outside heaven where you can be perfectly safe from all the dangers and perturbations of love is hell. Well, to explain agape is never easy. It's my favorite. It's unconditional love, cosmic, unconditional, limitless love. No conditions, right? Um, it's the greatest expression of love as a vibration from my point of view. So I would like to say just a few words. Is it possible for you to like your enemies, those who harm you. So 
So can you love a person who bothers you? Someone who hurts you and still hurts you intentionally? Someone who ruined your plans? Someone who killed your pet? A doctor who gave to a sibling of yours a wrong treatment and that led your beloved to death? Are you able to love those who hate you, humiliate you, offend you, betray you? Are you able to love the woman or the man who married the person you loved? Are you able to love the boy or the girl who is kissing someone you are in love with? Are you able to do that? I know these questions can be triggering. I could do worse. I'm probably going soft. <laughs> so to be able to feel love, compassion, compassive love for those who hurt us intentionally or not. So that is un conditional love no condition a condition is you are treating me nicely i feel love for you you are not treating me nicely i don't love you unconditional is both parts are the same so you love both parts in the same way and this is not easy right but it is possible to love all the human beings despite their labels, despite their actions. Um, I would like to say that the step right before unconditional love is called radical forgiveness. And it is the act of understand, comprehend that hurt people hurt people, hurt people, hurt people, hurt people, hurt people. Not my sentence, but it's powerful. To comprehend that we are all one and even if we do not have to justify cruelty, or any kind of aggression or violence against anything or anybody, love is beyond that. So if you are able to get rid of the anger, the resentment, the hatred, and change the blaming for forgiveness, the concept of Guilt will disappear from the world, or at least from your mindset. And you will maybe be able to feel one day that overwhelming feeling of love that is freedom, peace, enlightenment. This is the true enlightenment that people are so desperately looking for. Love is the answer. Love is all around. You have to keep your heart open. So love is the path. Love is the mission. Love is the lesson. Love is the high purpose. So if you want to help humanity, Work on this. Listen. Just a bunch of examples. Learn to love the neighbor who bothers you playing crap music out loud. Or learn to love the boy or woman who are in a partnership with the person you love. Or 
learn to love the thief who stole your wallet or your tablet or your smartphone or learn to love the customer service agent who was so rude at the phone with you and so on and so on send love send light feel compassion because there is no separation between you and them maybe you have a different vibration right now but you are still part of the oneness of the whole picture this is how to be uh, truly in the flow and it is the only one way to experience true love true transforming love this is the only way because it is very easy to be into unconditional love while meditating on a yoga mat but are we able to feel this love light blossoming from our hearts when someone is really pissing us off because when we experience a situation where our ego is being triggered that is the right moment to do a reality check and to see where we are. So I would like to um, close this um, video about the four types of love with the words of Lorenzo Quinn about his iconic sculpture the four loves dated 2000 he wrote i was inspired to make this sculpture while reading the book four loves and decided to present the loves as the foundation stones on which the weight of the world should be supported touching on themes of equilibrium and evolution the four loves exemplifies the art of harmony balance and adaptation the first stone representing agape faith and unconditional love is made out of polished bronze so as to look pure the second stone symbolizes eros passionate love for which a red stone has been used, strong yet fragile on its own. The third stone represents philos, friendship, and has been created in polished stainless steel as individuals are reflected in their friends. The fourth and last stone represents storge, family love, and is made out of wood, a warm material, live, organic, and continuously growing. Lorenzo Quinn believes that on top of these formative stones, individuals build the complex puzzle that is their world after which they build their relationships and if these are kept in perfect balance the ultimate goal of long-lasting relationships is achieved